Maybe maybe District Seven. Maybe District Seven already spent the money. See, there's money missing. There's money missing. There's money missing. There's there's corruption going on. They're trying to cover it up, and you're poking the bear. You're at what? It's your word. the city wished to place their fire district's intent to be annexed into Grant County Fire District on the April 7th or April ballot at the January 7th city council meeting. I didn't say that. I know that. I'm just going by each paragraph. Each paragraph contains a lie. Understand? Okay. 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 And we're going to correct this as your publicist, as your, sorry, as your PR man, as your... (laughs) campaign manager for mayor uh, I advise you to listen to the falsities and then we'll correct each one and I'll show you what it's going to how we're going to spin it okay uh, well I'm not going to spin anything until I talk to an attorney no no I know I know you're not but your attorney would have to approve the spin type of thing yes <laughs> this is only the third paragraph of, of 20 here It says, at the January 7th City Council meeting, the council agreed to wait until August to file the paperwork. So you weren't there at that. What what, what date did they they say? January 7th. 7th, okay. Yeah. But that's after I I turned them in. Yeah, exactly. And after they already approved them. (laughs) Aha, they they failed to mention that. But okay, we'll get to it. Yeah, and they, they knew about it. Yeah as to have the measure up for vote in the November election. The city wanted time to educate residents on the annexation into District 7 and did not believe that an April vote would give them enough time to do so. Rushton pointed out Brown was silent at the November 7th meeting when the council discussed their intentions and did not inform the council he already filed the paperwork. November 7th meeting. Now, what... what? So November 7th is when, why is, this doesn't make any sense. It's a contradiction in dates here. The, the, the council, according to this, passed this ordinance on the fifth day of November, and it says that uh, she's lying. She's pointing out that you were silent at the November 7th meeting when the council discussed their intentions. The, the, she said November 7th? Yeah. She's claiming you. She's a lie. I know. That's what I'm saying. There's another lie. So we're going to document each lie. Okay? Because each lie is a slander, a case of slander or defamation. Actually, there was no meeting on November 7th. The meeting was on no- November 5th. Right. Okay, good. Well, this, yeah, exactly. This says November 5th is when it was approved. Yes. So she wasn't there. Okay, anyway, you got the date wrong. So I did not inform the council he already filed the paperwork. He did, 
You didn't file the paperwork uh, with the Grant County until when? January 5th. Right. So that was like two months after they passed the ordinance. It still hadn't been filed, correct? Right. Okay. Excellent. Two months later where you actually, that's the truth of the matter. Yes. Okay, then. <laughs> now, if I were a judge, if I were a judge, I would say, you know what? Uh, case dismissed. Go back to work, basically. But we don't want to do that. We want to make a big deal out of this. Here we go. Rushton pointed out, blah, blah, blah. It could have been very devastating, but luckily the commissioners realized it was probably an error and contacted us, <laughs> said Rushton. Brown, who did not attend Wednesday's meeting, accused City Finance Director Karen Dillon of not doing her job in filing the paperwork itself. Yikes. Now, did you? Did you? Did you do it? Did you, did did you, do you it? accuse Karen Dillon of not doing her job in Why did you do it, Robert? No, I said, uh, for whatever reason, the clerk <laughs> failed to transmit this document to your office. And I got that Why quote out of another article from I-Fiber, which is more accurate. <laughs> but anyway. Why did you do uh, it? Da, 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 da. So, uh, Robert, why did you do it? Why did you, why did you do it, Robert? Auditor's office. See, Richard Bird is, uh, how do you say it? Not getting his facts straight? Okay. For whatever reason, the clerk of Soap Lake, Karen Dillon, has failed to transmit the enclosed documents to your office, reads Brown's letter. In an interview with the Columbia Basin Herald, Brown said that he does not represent the city. He represents himself as a city council member. Brown said prior to the first of the year, he had met with another city resident, whom he did not name, who was on a committee with Brown uh, to further the annexation process. He said that he gave uh, the other a copy of the city's <coughs> annexation ordinance, mm -hmm. and the person wanted to know its status. So he called the clerk's office and was told that it wasn't transmitted <gasps> yet, said Brown. Why didn't Bird do it? Why didn't you do it? <laughs> Why didn't you do it? Why didn't Burr do it? Why did he do it? Burr had the question. Why didn't Burr ask him? Why didn't you do it? Formally withdraw, withdraw the typo to get. There's typos here. Withdraw Brown's submission to the county and anonymously, unanimously passed an amendment stating they did not intend to deliver the documents to the county in the first place. And then we put question mark. Is that true? That's not true because they passed the ordinance saying, exactly. <laughs> yes, thank you. In addition, every council hey. except for John Clasco signed a formal complaint letter against Brown, which was really? filed with the city. Glasgow voiced trepidation in signing the letter because Brown was not in attendance and could not defend himself. Dog. I am not going to sign it for two reasons, yeah. remarked Glasgow. First of all, what Mr. Brown done is done. basically I done. can't see what's <laughs> here and I don't understand it myself. <coughs> I don't understand that statement either. They can't write it. Yeah. These people yeah. can't write yeah. it. Well, it he, does, he, he doesn't understand the, the document. Uh, he called me up. Glasgow. He asked me these, those questions, you know, why Living. didn't I, uh, why did I do it, and et cetera, et cetera. And I said, John, if you will look at the document itself, you will understand why. And so he, he uh, first off, he read the, the concurrence from District 7, then he got to, uh, and he started to read, and I said, oh, drop down to the last, I think it's the last paragraph. Yeah.
<laughs> I got it. I got it. All right. Oh, yeah. All Facility. Right. Good definition. Wow. wow. On the January 7th meeting, yeah. uh, I was really uh, stunned uh, because that meeting we were to... Uh, stunned. <laughs> Oh, oh, dear 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 dear. Dear. <laughs> Tum, I mean, suffering Yeah, because you know, we, we have, unbeknownst to me, uh, the mayor had other ideas. Right. <sighs> and I put up Bert Beckwith, and that stunned the rest of the did it. Yeah. They were just Why'd you do it, Burr? Why'd they do it? Why'd they do it? Exactly. They just violated the law. They, they, they are working under their own the law. They make a law and then they violate exactly. it. Brown also 
also <laughs> left a December Salt Lake Council meeting after the council refused to let him take the public meeting. Brown said he wanted to take the meeting to have a record of what he said, not necessarily record others. He was later allowed to take the meeting. Council member John Hillman said Brown's actions discredited both himself and the city. <laughs> I really don't like to have Mr. Brown taking council action on his own because he has very poor judgment, remarked Hillman. What? He doesn't gather the facts. He only reads the facts as he wants hey, to. Hey, let's start a West Brown campaign against him. Council <laughs> set out for certain people who are involved here, and that's all his actions are doing. Involved? He's this city council. What and I'm sorry, I don't want to be him. I don't want to defend him. I just want him to be discredited. You're a little kid, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's defamation. Oh, that's defamation. And they, uh, huh? They got John out of bed for that. <laughs> he was sick. They dragged him out of uh, the bed to make him say that. <laughs> you haven't done a Freaking thing wrong, as I can see it. Now, uh, that's the. That, so all I all I did was I delivered a message from the Salt Lake City Council to the commissioners. So, what's the big deal? That's all I did. What's the big deal? Salt Lake City Council ordered that this message. I did do it, Robert. <laughs> Why'd you do it? Now, is, is, that, is that such a, uh, is that Why raise the pinnacle of all the slime that I got? Oh, uh, really? yeah, right there. But here's the thing. Back in January, see, iFiber 1 is, is more accurate mm -hmm. in their reporting here. Yes, they are. Okay. Yes. Uh, they're saying that this is Jeff Chu. <coughs> Jeff in negotiations to contract what he's on with Grand thing. County Fire District 7 for fire service <laughs> in Salt Lake. Lynn Nelson, the chairman of that district, is the head of this whole thing, okay? She's behind all this lobbying yeah. to merge the two for whatever yes. reason, whatever Lynn Nelson her, I don't know. Owns the, never gave me this name she anymore. owns the, the, the car wash, the, never gave the local laundry. Here. Right? Uh, and it's the attorneys who are creating this stir here mm. so they can get paid. Paid? Okay? It, it's, it's not a, it's a no-brainer. Either you want it or you don't. The city council already mo voted to merge, so why are you creating such a controversy and stepping on someone's toes? Why are you being the scapegoat? Because uh, Gravel, Gravel, Kinnison, and... Dylan are in cahoots together. Ooh, the rats. Yep. The rats aboard the ship, mate. To be uh, in the best interest of the city, when in fact they're lining their own pockets. Yep. Okay. And it either what's the <laughs> it certainly isn't duty because they're all getting paid. Duty. Uh, Ravel's duty. Duty. Name is all big duty. Under his real estate flag. Karen Dillon has a big and booty. Behind that, and then what am I looking there's all for kinds here? of stuff I can tell you about that. That's beside the point. Wait, his wait. leadership is at question. It'll here. come to me. I'm gonna finish write, researching this and writing it. But back in January, Linda last Nelson, year, about the same Soap Lake Car Wash. It says main uh, culprit. The advantages Jesus are being considered by the city. Key Council, witness. Blah, blah, blah. Character. Linda Kyler, Nelson. Brandon Hood, who later got fired. They're not mentioning that. The whole story here. See, they're giving out the story on, in on, bits on. and pieces, and, and you can't judge uh, a book by one page. Hood said in early December he believed there are alternatives to the city contracting with the fire department. Hood is rebuilding the fire bar. So he was against, uh, against it, so he was fired. And then the fire machine and shield was also fired prior to that. So Gravel has been incompetent in dealing with stuff. In, in his, That's yeah, putting in it mildly. The city address Gravel described the fire department as below standards. When's his next state of the city address? Give me somebody else. A year from now. Did he already give this year's? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, I missed it. Uh, <laughs> the original fire story it. stated the city was finishing the contract. Uh to provide the fire and ambulance services for Salt Lake. The two agencies are negotiating the contract, and it is not complete. That's the end of that story. That's the point. And now they come out with, uh, let's see, who approved that one? 
That was uh, the news editor. His name is Bill Stevenson. It was written by Jeff Chu, but the correction was made by the news editor. Bill I'll Stevenson. Corrected, right? Now, this one written by Jeff Chu almost a year later is the one I gave you where you're looking to discipline you. Right. Okay, so what do you think about meeting with Mr. Newhouse? <gasps> She's out. You can't have somebody scared, scared running for office. Okay? Ooh, right. ooh, there you go. That's your first qualification or disqualification. <laughs> you can't be scared of, of or be intimidated by people. Yep. Yeah. And I, I, I believe that she is. Uh, uh, she, she counted uh, Ravel as a good friend. And of course, most, most all the other people that are doing this to me. Yeah. Registered voter. That's the only requirement. That's it. Right, 
Three minutes so, left. Uh, let me make sure this I got goes on forever, right here. Let's just you say this is the headline right here. Uh -huh. We're done uh, on the show here. Let's, let's forget, forget the headline. This is a huh? story. I won't even tell you the headline. Uh, you're out? Karen Dillon has been politely asked to resign her position as finance district director as discussor. discovering a lawsuit finance discussor which claims that Dylan juggled the city's accounts illegally that's the first line of the article uh -huh. as discovering a lawsuit pending hold on pending hello proceeds don't tell me about this according to City law, an ordinance drafted by City Attorney Catherine Kinnison, who is also being asked to resign amidst the fire department controversy. Karen Dillon and her staff were supposed to deliver an ordinance, 1198, passed by the City Council on the 5th of November 2014. Why didn't she do it? The 10th of November 2014, <laughs> but didn't. Last year, two lives were lost in fire deaths Ooh. due to Soap Lake Fire Department and Public Safety Officer negligence according to a third lawsuit filed in as many ways by Citizens for Public Safety, a small group claiming that they fear the city is negligent in protecting the city from arson. Do you want to go to bed? On November 18, 2014, a letter from Lynn Nelson, chairman of the Grand yeah, County Fire District 7, who has a P.O. box mailing at, which has a P.O. box mailing address in Salt Lake, Boom. Uh, was sent to the Soap Lake City Council concurring with the council's decision to annex the fire department of the city. There were no time frames set by either Fire District 7 or the city council. The county board of commissioners has not approved the merger of the two fire departments according to procedures written into state law. Residents of the city of Soap Lake have not voted on the matter. Richard Byrd, a Herald staff writer, falsely published slander Burr? statements which he heard from the city council kangaroo <gasps> against Robert Brown, led by city attorney Catherine Another Kinnison, lawsuit. alleging oh. that he delivered documents oh. to the Grant County Commission without the city council's approval. Yet those documents delivered by Brown were already public knowledge as published in the Grant County Journal on the 10th of November 2014. <sighs> Mayor Raymond Gravel has been asked to resign for his inability to retain staff and employees in the public safety department Duh. and for his incompetence in dealing with conflict <clears> of <throat> interest in real estate right matters up, related to the fire department. Several citizens have asked for criminal prosecution from Grant County Prosecutor Gardner. White Dan. collar crime. Uh, let's put white collar, white collar criminal prosecution from Grant County Prosecutor Dar Garth Dano and Sheriff Tom Jones for Gravel. Guys, this just goes on and on. I'm almost done here. With other 16 seconds left. Pending. That's it's all pending. Story goes. That's it. End of story. Goodbye. And I wrote that while I was talking to you, reading and getting comments from the peanut gallery over here. <laughs> that means me. That means me. Doesn't it? We're done.